The Sig Sauer MCX Virtus is a versatile and reliable rifle that is used by many professionals and enthusiasts around the world. In this video, we will explore some of the key features of the MCX Virtus and why it is so popular, as well as my current build of the platform. One of the standout features of the MCX Virtus is something we're really going to be focusing on in this video. And that's going to be its barrel system, which allows for quick and easy barrel changes or swaps. This means that users can switch between different calibers or barrel lengths depending on their needs without having to take apart the entire rifle. I can't really show that on YouTube, but as you can see, we're running a 11.5 inch system here. 11.5 uh, really is a phenomenal length as it doesn't have the punchiness and wear of the 10.3 carbine while still having an overall pretty compact design. At the end of the barrel, I have a Surefire Warcomp, which is a flash hider compensator hybrid as I am not running this rifle suppressed. The Virtus barrel is between a medium and heavy contour barrel. This is good and bad. The original MCX had a pencil barrel, which many criticized as being too thin and having barrel flex as well as overheating issues. Um, they increased the barrel thickness in their next generation, which is this Virtus, which resulted in this. I prefer this. I don't find weight to be nearly as much of an issue as people make it out to be. I've had 11 pound SBRs, but I care a lot more about the functionality over the weight of the rifle. This rifle, although heavy and clocking in at about 9.5 pounds unloaded, 10.5 loaded, uh, offers me much more usability than a lighter barrel profile or a lightweight build. Uh, the barrel change feature is particularly useful for professionals who may need to adapt to different scenarios or situations before the mission or reconfigure their setup often. Um, in the civilian world, this also gives you the benefit of if you have an entire upper, you can just throw on a new upper, which is something you can do with the AR platform. But if you just have a 300 blackout barrel, and let's say the barrel already works with the handguard, or if you do have another handguard, you can change the handguard in the barrel to something like a 6.75 inch 300 blackout barrel extremely quickly and efficiently, which is something that the AR platform can't be said to be able to do. The MCX Virtus is also known for its accuracy and reliability. Its gas piston operating system reduces recoil and ensures consistent performance even in adverse conditions and especially when suppressed. I did mention that the MCX Virtus is known for its accuracy and I did want to touch on that. This rifle is just uh, about sub MOA. Um, Piston guns are generally uh, less accurate than DI guns just due to the nature of their operating system. However, I have noticed that this weapon using quality ammo, 77 grain OTMs, MK262, or uh, IMI, 77 grains, I am able to actually achieve sub MOA at 100 yards. Um, DI is fantastic. No one is disputing that but users generally prefer piston for most suppressed shooting due to the decrease in gas pressure and gas in your face when firing the weapon, as well as the system usually runs cleaner. Um, as a quick note, on my roughly 4K rounds, I have still yet to actually have a malfunction that 4K rounds is actually an estimate. It's between 4 and 5 at this point. However, I have yet to encounter any type of malfunction on this platform. Um, that should be expected for most ARs or most farting, fighting carbines, <laughs> um, but still, that is of note. It is incredibly easy to change from normal to adverse on the adjustable piston, which may be required if you're going from subs to supers, brass to steel, or even a clean rifle to a dirty rifle. So, moving up the rifle... We, of course, have our upper receiver pick rail, which will accept lights, lasers, optics, or anything you want to throw up there. Another important note is that the upper actually runs above the barrel a few inches, 
It allows you to move your optic up, which can aid in situational awareness for the red dot or EOTech use cases. And by that, I mean generally you want your red dot a little bit farther up the rail because you're going to be shooting with both eyes open. You're basically going to transpose that dot over your target and not see the bezel. So it's of a difference, but if you have it further up the rifle, first of all, it's going to allow you to have like a magnifier and irons behind the setup a little bit easier, as well as you're not going to have the body of the optic taking up so much room in your peripheral vision, in case you didn't know why you always see people trying to put optics so far up their rifle. Anyway, um, as you can see in the front, I have a LS321G by Holosun, a Cloud Ryan, Rain, and EOTech on a Unity riser on this setup. Um, and I really do consider this gun more of a night gun setup than anything else. I used to have magnification in ACOG with an offset dot, a Razor 1 to 6, which was also phenomenal, although we'll get into that in another review, which I'll show some pictures of here. But this current build um, has been more designed to allow very good active and passive aiming under nods. For those of you that don't know, active is going to be using a IR laser and illuminator, which is easily the, the best way to shoot under nods. Um, whereas uh, passive aiming is going to be actually using your optic, which is pretty difficult to do behind a PVS-14 or binos. Um, but the EOTech is well known for being basically the best in this category. So I do have an EOTech on a riser, which allows it to be put at a um, higher, uh, it, it, it's higher on my rifle, makes it so I can easily get to that rifle um, when using my nods. I don't need to put my PVS-14 so low onto the gun. Um, the EOTech on a Unity riser, as a quick hint, I recommend it a lot. It's a fantastic setup. Moving back on the rifle, we of course have the collapsing stock. Um, I'm not going to spend too long on this, but the stock can be used while folded, which isn't a feature I think anyone really cares about, but folding it does help it fit in bags. So it definitely is a pro over the AR-15 platform. However, you can buy um, conversions for normal AR-15 buffer tubes that allow it to be collapsed. Um, you're just not going to have the ability to shoot the weapon while it's collapsed. Uh, to reiterate though, I don't know if anyone has ever used their stock collapsed in a professional setting. Uh, it's not like Call of Duty, it doesn't increase your aim down sight speed. Um, it's borderline not useful, but the foldability is an extremely useful aspect as, like I mentioned, getting this into a bag or a backpack is significantly easier. Lastly, we're going to talk about the receiver and the lower hemisphere of the gun. So, in the front, I currently have a BCM grip, as this is a registered SBR. Um, that BCM grip allows for a little bit better recoil control. I can pull the platform into my shoulder better, but more importantly, it allows me to wrap my hand and hold on to that uh, IR device, the 321G, a little bit easier, which if you, if you look in the clips, you'll see that I wrap my thumb over. Uh, without that grip, uh, I don't really have a good purchase on the weapon. So, a little bit further back, I have the Geisley Trigger, which is absolutely phenomenal. Um, and here's what that looks and sounds like. This is uh, new audio, so it may not line up perfectly, but trust me when I say this trigger is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the problem is that that trigger does cost roughly $300. So. Do you need a Geisley trigger to be proficient at shooting and to have fast splits? No, you can do this on a mil spec trigger. In fact, the MCX stop trigger is quite phenomenal. It's definitely better than an AR-15 standard trigger, but this does it does allow me to flex my weapon prowess a little bit better. A nice trigger really does. Um, it makes your already present shooting skills that much better. But if you don't have those already shooting uh, skills, then it's not going to improve you whatsoever. You do need to put the time in to be better with the trigger. So, uh, a little bit further down, I have an HRF Magwell uh, for some faster reloads. 
which doesn't really sound very necessary. AR-15s usually have a flared magwell, the MCX has a flared magwell, but under nods, it is extremely difficult to reload. So this helps with that quite a bit. And then, of course, I have the standard SIG grip. I don't know who makes it, I don't care. It came with the base Burtis. It's fine. So, the recoil. The recoil makes and breaks most weapons, and boy do I have some good news. So the recoil of the Virtus is probably my favorite part. Because of the weight of the system, because of the fact that it is both extremely front heavy, which isn't great, but it has a war comp on it, um, and it has that piston system, it really does have almost no recoil. In these clips, you can see me easily getting double taps or quick strings of fire with the rifle barely moving in my hands. My EOTech quite literally doesn't move off target at close or medium range. Uh, and that can be set for a normal well-tuned AR-15 as well, as long as you're doing your part. If you give this to Jerry Michalek, I can assure you, he's going to shred. It doesn't need to be an MCX. He's going to shred with any gun you give him. But, if you've shot the Virtus, you know what I mean. Or a well-tuned piston gun, you know what I mean. It just doesn't move. Which is great. I'd prefer we live in a world where recoil didn't exist. But it does. So we try our best to improve it. We try our best to completely remove the recoil from the system. Overall, an absolutely excellent shooting experience that I think brings the MCX from a premium $2,2500 rifle to a, a top tier system. I've got about 4K rounds on this rifle, like I said, at this point in time, uh, and I would consider it my main squeeze, if you will. I think the only issues I've had were trying to run steel without changing it to the adverse setting. I said before I hadn't had any malfunctions. That's not completely true. When I do run steel, if I don't swap from the standard pressure to the adverse setting, uh, it will, if I remember correctly, I think it turns into a bolt action and it won't cycle at all. Um, but that is to be expected. Most rifles with adjustable pistons also have that feature. Um, but at the end of the day, it is a sub MOA rifle that has yet to fail me besides the price. Um, but besides that price, I would consider it a basically direct improvement over the AR-15 platform. Well, I'd actually consider an improvement over the new, uh, 277 NGSW platform coming out as well, but... Hey, that's a story for another time, and a lot of great YouTubers have already said their opinions on that platform. Uh, it's gonna fail. <laughs> but, back on the MCX, it's not a huge upgrade though. The AR-15 can do 99% of what the MCX can do, and a lot cheaper and lighter. But if you need the modularity, and you want one of the most premium rifles you can get on the market, in my opinion, the MCX is likely right for you. More videos to come on this MCX. I change things up quite a bit and pretty drastically from a 16 inch with a 1-6 LPVO and an offset dot to a offset dot and an ACOG to cutting the barrel to 11.5 and running an ACOG and a dot all the way down to turning this into a dedicated NV gun, which is 11.5 uh, with an EOTech on a riser. This gun's had some pretty drastic makeovers in the past. Maybe one day I'll get a 300 blackout upper and a suppressor, but hopefully by then suppressors will be unregulated and I won't need to send $200 to the government. That's the only thing holding me back at this point. Anyway, this has been a really quick review of the MCX platform. I'm very passionate about this firearm. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and comment down below if you agree or disagree.